listening to What's Your Wrinkle with Dr. Arthur Perry. What's your wrinkle? And we're back. This is Dr. Arthur Perry. This is What's Your Wrinkle right here on WABC in New York City. Tonight, I am honored to have as my guest a neuroradiologist, an interventional neuroradiologist, Dr. Sid Roy Chattery, has been on the faculty of Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital and the medical school at Robert Wood Johnson, now part of Rutgers, by the way, uh, for a long time. And I'm happy uh, to say that uh, Dr. Uh, Roy Chattery is one of those doctors that we're quite proud of at Robert Wood Johnson, trained at Northwestern in uh, Chicago and uh, did a radiology residency there and then did a uh, special fellowship at the hospital for the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. And we were lucky enough to have him uh, come on the uh, faculty of the medical school and on the staff of the hospital. Are you there, Dr. Roy Chattery? Yes, I am, Dr. Perry. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks so much for taking time on your Saturday evening. Now, I have not had a uh, a neurointerventional surgeon before on this show, although, as you know, I was uh, very, very good friends with uh, Randy Siegel, who was one of your colleagues who passed away, and uh, we were quite close friends. And he did call the show uh, every now and then, so uh, this being his birthday, I think it's a nice thing to mention, uh, Randy. But but tell me uh, a little bit about the neurointerventional surgery program at Robert Wood Johnson. Absolutely. Uh, I would want to say Randy was one of my favorite people, one of my, my best friends at work. He's an amazing person. But the inter- interventional, neurointerventional surgery is one of the newest fields in medicine. It's uh, roughly about 20 years old. It involves uh, interventional neuroradiologists like myself and endovascular neurosurgeons and interventional neuro- neurologists. And what we do is we do minimally invasive treatments of, blood, uh, of disorders of the brain and spine. Um, instead of open surgery, we can do almost all of our procedures through a small incision through the, uh, through the leg, insert a catheter through the blood vessel, and go into the blood vessels and either uh, we can treat stroke, brain aneurysms, um, other vascular disorders. Uh, you know, mostly we specialize in the brain and the spine. Now, my guest this evening is uh, Dr. Sid Roy Chattery, who is a, a clinical assistant professor of radiology at Robert Wood Johnson uh, University Hospital in New Brunswick, New Jersey. He's one of the guys that uh, we call you the workhorse of the hospital. When something is complicated, now we call the interventional radiologist because you guys can do almost anything. And it, it's really amazing. When I, when I started medical school way back in 1977, up in Albany, we did not even have a CT scanner in 1977. Isn't that amazing? And look where we have come now. Well, Dr. Roy Chowdhury, now what are let's let's talk a little bit about neuroendovascular surgery. Boy, oh boy, it is so complex, so interesting. Tell us a little bit about this. Well, it's what it is is I'll, I'll describe it in a simple way. It's uh, it's basically like uh, we're you know it's sophisticated plumbers for the brain. So if you think of the brain as having pipes or blood vessels that go to the brain, there are two different types of problems that can occur. You can have a clogged pipe, which is an ischemic stroke, which can block the blood vessels to the brain. And in 2015, um, interventional therapy, interventional neuroradiology, is, is, has become the best treatment available for a large vessel stroke or a, a, a large pipe that's blocked. And that's better, basically has been shown to be better than uh, just IV TPA alone. Actually, Um, We have six trials now that show that, you know, if you have a large stroke, you're better off treated with uh, interventional techniques and IV TPA. The other thing that can happen... And that IV TPA, by the way, for for listeners, that's that clot-busting liquid. Uh, So uh, go go right ahead. Thanks. Sorry about that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So IV TPA used to be the gold standard, but now the combination is the gold standard for large vessel strokes. And just like plumbing, I was talking about a block pipe... The other thing that can happen is you can develop a leak, uh, and by that, that's a blood vessel that's leaking, such as a brain aneurysm. And that, that we do the exact opposite. What we do is we try to quickly shut down that brain aneurysm uh, and shut down that blood vessel to stop it from bleeding. And we do that all through a small incision through the groin. We're able to do it very quickly, very rapidly, uh, and for most patients uh, with better outcomes than with open surgery. Now, there, there are some cases where open surgery is more beneficial, but in most types of aneurysms, it can be done with minimally invasive techniques. So now you're treating things like aneurysms and strokes and malformations of the blood vessels. 
Uh, it's really kind of an incredible, incredible advance in medicine. And by the way, we're talking uh, with Dr. Sid Roy Chowdhury, who is a radiologist at Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital. And where is Robert Wood Johnson? If you haven't listened to this uh, show before, it's right in the geographic center of New Jersey. So if you put your finger right on the map, you hit Robert Wood Johnson. It's on the the line, the I hate to say the Amtrak line, right from New York. Amtrak's gotten the bad reputation in the last week, but it still is a very safe way to travel. And you can travel from New York to New Brunswick, and you walk one block to the hospital, and there you are. And by the way, there's a website at Robert Wood Johnson. It's rwjuh.edu, rwjuh.edu, and an 800 number, 888-MDRWJUH, 888-MDRWJUH. So what are the new things? We've got about a minute left. What are some of the new things on the horizon that you're doing over there? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, um, one of the things, we, the stroke treatment is really that what's up and coming, but uh, I want to just point out, uh, this morning I went to a, uh, a children's specialized hospital support uh, walk for one of my patients, a patient named Ariana, and we treated her about four years ago. This was a seven-year-old girl who uh, accidentally was shot through the face with an arrow, which cut through one of the major blood vessels in her brain. And the only treatment at that time that we, we were able to do is she would not have tolerated open surgery. What we did was emergency neurointerventional surgery. We went, we went in through the artery in the leg. We quickly went up, used a balloon to block the blood vessel that was bleeding, and then used coils to, to stop the bleeding. Uh, she underwent six more surgeries, four interventional and two open. Uh, but this is the kind of patient 20 years ago, and, and she's doing great. We saw her with family this morning. My family went. We had a great time at the, at the walk. But this person uh, really... 20, 30 years ago would not have uh, survived uh, because the, of the technology that we have today. I mean, this is... That's uh, terrific. We, we are getting cut off by that music. Dr. Sid Roy Chowdhury from Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital, thank you so much for taking your time in the Saturday evening. We could talk about this stuff all night. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll be back next week.